Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I'm out of my granny camper, which is a trailer that I bought to be able to spend more time with my family in the lower 48. It wouldn't be as enjoyable a time if I didn't know that I could still take care of myself and my family if I needed to if they were with me in my trailer. So I wanted to share with you some of the food items that I bought so that I can also have an emergency food stockpile even if I'm in a small RV or camping trailer. No matter where you go, even if you just set out for the day in your car, you never know what could happen. You always want to have some extra supplies with you. A good place to start would be to think about a bug out bag or a 72 hour kit. Some food that could see you through the first few days of an emergency if for some reason you couldn't leave your home, you couldn't get to your home, or you were stranded wherever you were, you should have a few supplies with you at all times. So the first few items I consider my 72 hour kit and the food items that would be easy to just open and eat. They don't require any cooking and they could see you through for several days and depending on how you stretch those food items they could serve you and even a few others if you were careful. One thing to keep in mind, make sure you always have water with you and never ration the water. You can ration food but you shouldn't ever ration water. So the first items are just tear open and eat. There's fruit snacks, there's little cracker, graham cracker packages, graham cracker bears, chocolate chip cookies, fruit and grain, Nutri-Grain type bars, and some Cliff Bars. Now the interesting thing about the Cliff Bars, I did a review on these a few years ago that I had some out at my granny camp, which is my Alaska off-grid cabin. The Cliff Bars out at my granny camp were way expired, and guess what? They were still perfectly fine and good to eat. So I am a huge fan of Cliff Bars now. I'm not worried about having those in my stockpile and not rotating them within the date on them. Other things just tend to get stale but the Cliff Bars turned out to be wonderful. These are all foods you could just open and eat. They don't require any preparation, no heating up, nothing at all. I also bought some of the fruit pouches. They're things that the little kids like. And guess what? Anybody can twist it open and eat it. You don't have to worry about being a small child. They don't require refrigeration. They're a very sturdy pouch. They can go into your bag without getting punctured and they're good for quite a long time. Plus they're pretty delicious. Even if you don't want to eat it out of the little spout, you can squeeze it out onto a spoon, seal it back up, and have more for later. A new kind of already prepared meals, the Reese Harvest Bowl, they're already completely cooked and it even says right on the package, you don't even have to heat it up, you can just tear it open and eat it. Or you could microwave it for a minute if you wanted to, but it's perfectly fine to eat it just the way it is. The first one I tried was chickpea lentil and I was surprised how spicy it was. It was really quite spicy. I also found that it was filling. A good way to stretch these would be to roll it up into a tortilla. Then you have a bigger meal or you could put several tortillas and then you could share it with someone else and you're going to have the addition of those calories and that bulk to help your meal last longer. So the first one has chickpeas, lentils, brown rice, spinach, and curry. These are nice because they have 12 grams of protein, 32 grams of whole grains, they're high in fiber, and they're non-GMO verified. They're gluten-free and suitable for vegans. So if you have any kind of a special dietary needs, this might be something you'd want to include anyway because a lot of the foods that most people stockpile for their prepper pantry, like cans of chili, you may have no interest in, and perhaps this is something that would fit the bill. The second variety of Reese Harvest Bowl that I tried is a quinoa bowl. This one has red and white beans, quinoa, tomatoes, corn, and dressing. And this one really kind of had a sweet, like a mango flavor, and it was very good. And you can even put this on some of the little round street taco size, make some little street tacos, roll it up a few scoops at a time onto a little tortilla, and these are very good too. I thought this one was very enjoyable. And the two of them were distinctly different flavors. The quinoa has 9 grams of protein, 46 grams of whole grain, it's high in fiber, it's non-GMO verified, it's also gluten free and suitable for vegans. Both of these are delicious. They have distinctly different flavors. One was very spicy, one was a little sweet. Both were very filling. They're nutritious and they're good. 
when I purchased these, the date on them was about six months out, and so these can last for quite some time. But they're not going to last forever like a can of food would, so you want to make sure that you're rotating these. If you put them into your bug out bag, make sure that you are rotating them every, say, six months. Check the date on them. Don't leave things into your bug out bag. You don't want them to leak or spoil or get all over the other contents of your bug out bag. So keep track of the grab and go foods that you have, that they're not outdated, expired, or that they've been compromised in any way. I also bought a Snapdragon Vietnamese pho. And this one though does require water, but you can just add boiling water and put the lid on it. You don't have to put it in the microwave. Because my trailer has a microwave and I also have a propane stove, this is something that I could use. It's not an optimum grab and go food if you don't have any way to heat something up. You wanna have variety in the foods that you're stockpiling for your prepper pantry and for any kind of an emergency. Next, I bought a supply of very little cooking, foods that can last a long time in the pantry. They're lightweight, so they aren't going to be uh, too heavy to store in my travel trailer, but they're also packaged well, and they can last a long time. And in any kind of a situation, you could make a quick meal if you wanted to. I bought 10 different varieties of the Knorr noodles and rice. They're so lightweight, they're already packaged in very sturdy packages. You can just add water. Yes, they might require a few other things, but if you didn't have anything else, it wouldn't matter. You could add some water. It already has some flavoring in it. You could easily boil some water, heat these up, and you're going to have a filling meal. It may not be the most delicious meal you ever had, but it's certainly going to be filling and help keep you going in times of emergency. And I was still able to find these for only $1 a pouch. So I have 10 bags of food for $10, and that's quite a bit of already flavored, easy to prepare food. You can always bulk these up into a bigger, better meal, add some meat, add some vegetables, add whatever you have, stir something in, add it on the side, and you might have a bigger, better meal. I have a package of potato gnocchi. I bought these at the Dollar Tree when they were still $1, and they can last almost a year. They are simple because they're already soft. You just need to heat them up, boil them a little, put a sauce over them. They're very simple. They have a nice flavor, and it's something different to keep in mind. I also bought a package of Barilla Ready Pasta. This is already cooked in the pouch. It's not very much pasta, though, for how much money that it costs. You can usually find a pound of dry pasta for about $1, and this is 8 ounces of cooked pasta, and so it's already going to be heavy because it's water-laden. So there aren't very many servings in this compared to what you get in a pound of dry pasta. But sometimes you're not able to cook, and so this would be something it's already cooked. You may not be able to heat it up, but you could still eat it, and you could have a meal that could help fill you up. To go with the gnocchi and the ready pasta, I bought a jar of the Classico Alfredo sauce. This one is this one is roasted garlic Alfredo. It comes in different varieties. It's a smaller jar, but these are two smaller servings, and so you want to try to make the most of your food that the amount that you have can go together so you don't have leftovers. And smaller spaces might require for you to have smaller amounts, smaller items, and so that was how I chose these things. But I could still make two filling meals just with these three things. Don't forget to include your favorite beverages. I found this little box of wine that's going to go with my Italian dinners. Something I did last summer was dehydrate fruits and vegetables, and these are some of the vegetables that I dehydrated out of the garden in my Excalibur. I made a few videos about that. I'll put a link to those if you want to see how to use the dehydrator to dehydrate all different kinds of vegetables. And these are lightweight and they're perfect to put into an RV or a travel trailer or even into a bug out bag. However, part of the problem that I'm having is that it's so humid here. It's very cold, it's very wet, and I'm having a problem with humidity. So you want to very much keep track of your dehydrated items that they don't start absorbing moisture out of the air. So they need to be as airtight as possible, which isn't always ideal when you're in a very small space. There isn't room to put these in, say, a jar. I can't have big, heavy jars. They weigh too much. They take up too much room. And then when you're underway in an RV, the jars all rattle around and they could break. So I've double wrapped them into airtight Ziploc bags and I'm trying to keep them as dry as possible. 
You can just sprinkle these into anything. Say you want to make one of your nor packages, add a few of the vegetables into it while you're boiling it and that will rehydrate them and you'll have a whole selection of vegetables in your pasta when it's ready to eat. I bought a few of these containers at the Dollar Tree. They're not the most airtight containers, but they can help keep things arranged. You can also uh, snap off the lid and use them in your cabinets to fill them up with food and then slide them in and out and you can get into the back of the deep cabinets. So in this container, I have some of the dehydrated foods the freeze dried that I actually bought at the Dollar Tree. They had lots of different varieties. I got some of the cheese wisps. These are uh, freeze dried cheese. These are really tasty. This is a good way to have some cheese ingredients that are very lightweight to have with your food stockpile. I was able to find the carrots again. I did a video about these. These are good. I wasn't sure at first when I tried them because I was thinking they were going to be tasty like potato chips, but they're just carrots. And if you think that you're just eating carrots, then they're really good. And at first I thought, well, they're okay. And then I put them away and then I realized, oh, let me try those again. And after I ate some more of them, I thought they were really good. And then I've had a very hard time finding them. This is a great way to have carrots because it's lightweight and they're long lasting. You can have them to add into your meals. I also found the Harvest Snaps at Dollar Tree. I tried them a few years ago. I found them in the produce department in the grocery store in Alaska, which I thought was a weird place for them to be because I kept looking for them on the chip aisle. But these are also very tasty and they're reasonably nutritious. It's a way to get vegetables into you and maybe even you can get your kids to eat these. It may not be the same as eating peas, but it's going to be better for you than just eating potato chips. I also bought some bee fruitful freeze dried fruits. I bought the pineapple and the bananas. I haven't tried these yet so I only have one to see if they're okay. Most of the freeze dried fruits that I have bought at the Dollar Tree before were perfectly good but I haven't tried them all yet and so we'll see. If you see something you think you might like buy one and take it home and try it and then if you don't like it you learned your lesson. Don't stock up on them and find out no one likes them. Then you've wasted your prepper pantry and your grocery dollars. You've also wasted the space storing foods that you don't want when you could have spent that money and space on foods you do want to eat. You can see that's a lot of food to have for emergencies or just for snacking and it doesn't weigh very much so it's perfectly portable for different kind of activities that you may want to have for your bug out bag, your 72 hour kit, or just for snacks on the go. And it wouldn't be prepping if I didn't have beans and rice. I have a one pound bag of pinto beans, a one pound bag of black beans, and a five pound bag of rice. I have some containers that I've washed out. I'm going to fill them up to make sure that they're airtight. Only store food in food safe containers. Don't use something that ever held soap or any kind of a chemical. That's not okay to store your food. The containers are lightweight, but they're airtight, so it'll help make the most of the amount of food that I can store with the weight limits that I have on a travel trailer or an RV. Another long-lasting food is quinoa. Quinoa goes in the grain group, but it's actually really a seed, but that's okay. It's very easy to cook, it's very nutritious, and it's extremely versatile. You can drizzle it with olive oil, add a little garlic, stir in some spinach, you can serve it with a little maple syrup and almonds, maybe a sprinkle of cinnamon. There's all different ways that you can serve quinoa that are nutritious and filling and so it really deserves a spot in your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage stockpile. Plus this little tiny seed really bulks up. When you cook rice it doubles in size, when you cook quinoa it triples in size. Where one cup of rice equals two cups cooked, one cup of quinoa equals three cups cooked. So that's something to keep in mind too. Take that into account when you're cooking your quinoa so that you don't end up with all kinds of it left over. You want to uh, prepare the amount that you care to eat for the time that you're going to make it. And yes, you can refrigerate it, but don't go overboard and make a huge pot of something that you don't need to eat right away. You help your food last longer when you cook the appropriate amount and then you have the rest of it ready to cook another day. So whether you're staying home, you're bugging out, or you're heading out in your RV, make sure that you have a plan for how you're going to feed yourself and your family. It doesn't have to be complicated. You want some open and eat foods, you want some simple to cook foods, and then you want some of the longest term foods. 
That's how you build the levels of security into your food storage by making things in those three categories. Ready to eat, easy to cook, and longest lasting. If you have additional suggestions on easy to eat foods that you could take in your RV, leave it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.